Thank you. Thank you guys so much. You still got it. You still got it. You still got it. Hey, you? Yes, you're, we both still got it. We both still got it. We're both really, it. really good. I was uh, sharing a picture with him backstage. We met when he was touring with Better Nezra back in 1996. And I was just a kid cutting my teeth in radio in Eugene. And you had kind of a mini fro back then. I had a fro. A fro. We'll call it a fro. That, that when, uh, when proper product <laughs> is not put into this hair and, and with this humidity, it could get... In any moment, it could explode. Kapoof. On us. <laughs> with the humidity that we have. Just step outside and boom. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, welcome back to Portland. It's so good to be here, man. Yeah, a little love for, for coming back to Portland. And this fine, uh, this fine Bing Lounge thing, you guys. Yeah, this here. is a beautiful, beautiful space. Nice. We're very, very fortunate. The, the mid-90s, early 90s to late 90s, that just must have been a whirlwind. Your band, Better Than Ezra, like seven years it took to get a record deal. And then within seven weeks... I understand you guys were at number one. It, it was a crazy time because, you know, we, we, we got together when we were at LSU in 1988, which is crazy for me to think about, uh, you know, tolling away in our, in our 82 van um, all around the South. And then finally in 95, suddenly things kind of converged and good took off at 99X, an alternative station in Atlanta, Georgia. And suddenly we were the uh, the toast of the town. But it was a long road. Uh, it was a great time because, you know, the 90s, the mid-90s and late 90s was kind of like this, the end of the salad days for the record industry as we know it. So we got to see some crazy things and be flown around, and then it all came crashing down. <laughs> no, it did not. Rockstar status was pretty fun, though, for a while, I bet. Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. super. For rock. a while, you say that in past That's tense. I know. So I I retract that. <laughs> Edit that out. So I don't know how much truth there is to your Wikipedia page, yes. but you're a master impressionist. Uh, you, you do a few. I can do some. It is Bruce Springsteen's birthday today. Go, you're on. <coughs> Let's see. Uh... <laughs> I'm driving in your car. I'm not, I don't really know. No, I don't. <laughs> Tell me now, baby, is it good to you? Can it do to you the things I can do? I heard you do Richard Marks, though. You do a mean Richard Marks. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back. That was a pretty good. <laughs> I wasn't feeling I wasn't like feeling your Bruce. Night, baby, yet you've been dole and cut a six inch batter through the middle of my soul. <laughs> it's more like uh, Elvis Presley does. <laughs> Bruce, by the way, just turned 64. Bruce is amazing. And he did three hours at Rock and Rio, which is he, incredible. He is, you know, he makes all of us pale. He's the boss. Always yeah. will be. And Richard, uh, so you're and Richard. never make the mistake of talking about Bruce in Asbury Park, New Jersey at the Stone Pony like I did. What happened? Well, I was talking about <laughs> Bruce Springsteen and we, we, did a, we did Born to Run, which was our first mistake. And we, I was kind of like on the borderline of uh, kind of poking fun, but being respectful. Then in, from the back in like this perfect Tony Soprano voice, I heard, easy, <laughs> easy, slow down. And I was like, so I realized I was stepping on the toes of the, of the, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, of the boss. Watch yourself, kid. Watch yourself, kid. You're going to end up in a dumpster. You've been writing and producing. my Tony Soprano. Rest in peace. So that's three. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> All of them not very good. Writing and producing for a variety of bands. I have, yeah. Tell Me True or False on these. You've written and produced with Sugarland. Yes, a song called Stuck Like Glue. James Blunt. James Blunt, I'll, I'll Be a Man. Blondie. Blondie. Train. Train. Tristan Prettyman. Tristan Prettyman. You're just repeating me now at this point. True or false? They're on true. All those. They're true. They're all true. Those. My, my repeating you is an acknowledgement. Okay, okay. Their... <laughs> and most yes. recently, Bare Naked Ladies as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I get to, the fun thing is, you know, I'm a fan of all those guys. Yeah. Um, so it's an honor to to sit in a room, um, kind of a uh, kind of soak in what they do and, uh, you know, try to, to write a song with them. And I've, I've had a lot of success so far. Um, yeah, it's good. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you so much. You also work with Joshua Raiden, who was just in this room, actually. Josh is uh, is amazing. Yeah. And on Friday, and then the same day, Matt Nathanson was in here as well. And Matt and I have a song on his new album. Yeah, yeah, he's a good cat. Yeah, I was man. just, I was just. If you kind of follow me on Instagram and follow Matt, we we had this thing where, in the past several weeks, I've been uh, using Photoshop. I take his photograph <laughs> and put it on various people. Like I did it on Chelsea Handler, which is a funny, funny one. Go check that out. <laughs> If so inclined, and lately the uh, uh, the one uh, I put his face on Frank Stallone's 
um, album cover. And it's, glo- <laughs> it's glorious. I want to know a little bit more about your Better Than Ezra Foundation. It's raised uh, nearly a million dollars. It's actually $2 million. Oh, yes. Sorry, $2 yes. million. Dollars. That's awesome. And you've pretty much been, is that a foundation that is primarily assists with the rebuilding of New Orleans yeah, post-Katrina? Uh, we're in the 12th year of the btefoundation.org, and we founded it um, well, 12 years ago. In the first five years, it benefited the Multiple Sclerosis Society, which is uh, something that near and dear to me. I think everybody knows someone affected by MS. And then uh, in the wake of uh, Hurricane Katrina, we kind of changed the charter um, with our board of directors and stuff. We've got an amazing group of people who really do the heavy lifting down in New Orleans. And it's really kind of for Gulf Coast awareness, uh, rebuilding education. We've adopted a school in the Ninth Ward, Bethune Elementary, uh, built them playgrounds and everything. They, they don't have supplies, you know, everything from crayons to construction paper and cubbies for their stuff. And, and the work continues. Every year we have a, a big bowling tournament with a lot of people down, like Train comes down and plays, you know, a silent auction and stuff like that. It happens in the spring. So if you're interested, btefoundation.org. A little love for that. That's a yeah. lot That's a lot of money. It's good. And we, we just started, thank you, we just started doing, um, you know, events outside of New Orleans. We did one in Houston. The, uh, the, the beneficiary was a, a cancer research hospital for children. And then we did one in Dallas for Booker T. Washington School for the Performing Arts. So the, the um, the work continues and spreads. So we've got a lot of great people who work with us. A new Better Than Ezra album later this yes. year? Uh, well, actually, in the spring, uh, the label that dropped us is putting, a, in 2001, Elektra is putting out our new album, which we're excited about. Uh, maybe I'll play a new one. Maybe I'll play one of those songs this evening. And uh, yeah, so so it, it continues for Better Than Ezra. You know, just when like I'm like, okay, I'll produce and write. I live in Nashville now. and kind of hang up my, my strap, so to speak. Uh, they, people ask me, you know, hey, you're writing a lot of songs for other people. Why don't you guys do a new Better Than Ezra album? So I'm only more than happy to get out there and jump around. Well, congratulations on all the success along the way. And play some more for us. I will stop. I shall. I'll do a song I did with...